Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. I think the terminal is ripe for change and you can see that just in the last year or two, there's been a bunch of new tooling coming out for the terminal just to improve the developer experience. You have things like fig autocomplete that can be used in any terminal. You have new terminals being built and one of those is warp. Now, Warp is built in Rust. It's crazy fast. It's built right now just for the Mac, but we'll talk a little bit more about how they plan to come to other platforms in a moment here. And it's built using common design paradigms that we're used to. In fact, the co-founder and first employee both came from the Google Docs team. One of them ran the engineering and the other one ran the design. So there's been a lot of smart thinking in how the entire experience has been developed for you, the developer. Now, before we jump into Warp itself, let me talk through some of the things they're actually trying to fix when it comes to the terminal. If you're a brand new terminal user, first of all, you know that it's just really hard to learn as a first user. It also has some really poor defaults. So in other words, you just open the thing up and it's a blinking cursor and that's it. So you have to customize every single thing you want. In fact, I've done videos on customizing my prompt, on customizing my terminal, why you might do it, what benefits you get out of that. But there's a lot of work you have to do to actually get it working in any way that's useful to you. It's also very easy to make catastrophic mistakes in the terminal, even if you're an experienced developer. Also, the terminal is totally single player. It's non-collaborative by default. It's not really meant for using it with the team, and there aren't really options that allow you to do that without a decent amount of collaboration on the part of every single person involved. Additionally, every time you close it and reopen it, you start over from scratch. So each session is brand new. And probably the thing that's most frustrating for first time and experienced users is that the basic UI paradigms are just frankly weird. You can't click anywhere really. You can't use the keyboard to select text and replace it as you might expect. The output itself is hard to use. So you can't just like select a section of that output. Most of the time the terminals like mouse and keyboard accessibility are just awkward, weird, and different than anything else you might use on your machine. Now, for each of these types of problems, you can find individual solutions, but you have to kind of roll them yourself. And that's where all that customization comes into play. So as an experienced developer, perhaps you're like, hey, I already have my system set up the way I like it. Why should I try something else? But as any new developer can tell you, getting up all those customizations oftentimes takes hours. And in the end, all you've done is basically change the skin or the wrapper on whatever you're currently doing. And you still haven't really learned how to use it a whole lot better. Warp aims to essentially fix a lot of these problems out of the box without any customization. Of course, you can customize it, and that's what we're going to be talking about. Now, I'm going to answer three questions throughout the course of this video. Number one, what makes me interested in Warp? Number two, what makes me skeptical? And number three, should you try it? All right, let's jump right in. All right, so here is Warp by default, and you can already see that there's a lot that looks familiar, but there's a lot that also looks a little bit different, like these uh, shortcuts right on the home screen. Now, I mentioned this is built in Rust. It's compatible for Bash, ZSH, and Fish without any kind of configuration at all, and it's a full-featured text editor. So in other words, I can just come in here and start typing, and let's say I say like CD documents, something like that, and then you can see if I hit tab, it gives me the same kind of autocomplete that I would expect with something like oh my ZSH. So autocomplete is in here by default, but we'll get to that in a second here. First of all, it is a fully featured text editor. I'm gonna hit the right arrow and autocomplete all of this, but you can notice if I hit the back arrow and then now I start holding down the option key, it just jumps words like I'd expect. I can even select words with the keyboard holding down shift, just like I would in any other text environment on my machine. On top of that, I can come in here and just double click words. I can drag this out. Everything is as you'd expect when it comes to any kind of text input on your machine, which is one of the most frustrating things for me about using the terminal. I'm constantly frustrated that I can't just go in here and select all this like with the uh, keyboard shortcuts like option or command shift and then back or right arrow to select everything. So you have full keyboard and mouse accessibility. Now, in addition to that, you also have something called blocks. In fact, each output is separated into a block and you can see it's divided with a thin line there. So if I come in here and do like LS, this is now listing everything inside of here. Now, these blocks aren't just separated just for design sake. You can actually right click in here or use any of these keyboard shortcuts to do all kinds of things. So for instance, you can copy a command or you can copy just the output. You can copy both. You can create an actual permalink that you can share. You can copy the prompt. All of these things are available to you. Now, of course, Warp includes a lot of the things you'd expect, like split panes and all that kind of stuff, but I'm trying to stick to kind of what makes Warp 
different. So in here, you can also find within a block. So if you have a huge output, that's something that's super helpful is just to say, hey, within this, I'm looking for this specific string. Now, I don't know why this would be helpful at all, but let me go ahead and create this permalink. And you see what I can do is hit create and copy link like this. And now here, this would be live on the web. And in fact, if I've copied this, I can come back over this way. Let's just go ahead and grab this right here. So there it is. I don't know why that's helpful to anybody. I'll probably delete this by the time the video goes live. But you can see that now that whole output is just living for somebody. So if somebody needs access to this, they can quickly grab it. This is one of those collaboration features they're working on. And this is one of the first things we've talked about is this blocks. Second thing is text editor. We're going to look at the rest of these in a second. All right, let's move back this way. So you can see these blocks are available. You can actually uh, access them as well through the up and down arrow. And then, like I said, you've got access to all those commands as well. Another way that Warp makes it easy for new users and old users alike is that you have quick access to all of your previous commands. If I hit the up arrow, you see it just gives me all those commands immediately in a row, and I can just keep going up to find previous ones I've used. In fact, we're going to use some of these in a second. In addition to that, you have things like Control R to search previous commands, and that's familiar to those of you who use ZSH and OMIZSH, so very quickly finding things that you've used in the past. Now, it also auto-suggests commands, and I showed you that a second ago, but what I can do is also, maybe let's come in here and let's touch, and you see already it's giving me options. I could say touch readme, and then in this case, I'm going to use the right arrow and complete that and hit enter. Now, I can come in here, and let's say I can't exactly remember what to do, but I know there's some kind of command as a new user. I'm saying I know there's a command where I can see if I haven't committed anything. Well, what I can do is I can access something called AI commands. I'll hit control and tilde to access all of those. And I can say something like, see what things are uncommitted in my Git. Do you see how useful this is for, first of all, for basic users, but also for advanced users. Often you're doing things once that you've done a while ago, but it's been a while, you have to go Google it or look it up. And you can see just by typing in normally, you can actually get access to those kinds of commands. So I'll just hit command enter and it will run that for me or at least put it there. Now I can run it. And you can see that runs that right away very quickly. And it tells me a bunch of things, including the fact that nothing was added to the commit, but there are untracked files present. And it lists that untracked file out for me, readme.md. So that's its own kind of auto completion, but you can actually come in here as well. And let's say I say git. And then if I hit the tab key now, because I have a bunch of different options here, it'll actually list them out in this nice drop out menu here. So I can just come through here and read little details about each of these. Uh, if I kind of know what it is, I just can't remember the name. You can just start typing and it will actually narrow this down for you as well. So if I say S, it'll give me everything that starts with S. So uh, another really nice auto completion availability. So you can auto complete things with the right arrow if it's a directory or something like that. If it gives you multiple options between them, the tab will pop up a little menu. And then you also have access to things like the AI commands. Now, another thing that makes Warp interesting is something they call workflows. And you can access that with Control-Shift-R. And you can see that I've got a bunch of default ones in here. So uh, all these categories give me access to those. And I can come through here or search for something. And you can see what it's doing is basically giving me a list of common commands that I might run. Now, you can actually add your own workflows here as well. I haven't done any of that myself. Or you can access them online. They actually have a whole repository full of these things. And they put them all into a website as well. In fact, I'm going to come over this way and show you that. It's called commands.dev. And you can see right here, it gives you access to all of these things. You can contribute yourself. You can search for them. And this just gives you a list of the kind of workflows that have been user submitted and done by the team themselves. You can see how helpful this would be both for beginner users, but also for advanced users. If you're doing really complex commands, it's easy to get just a sing single character wrong and, again, make huge mistakes where you don't mean it. Well, you can actually save these workflows so that you'll always type exactly what you want to type and make sure you're safely doing the actual commands that you want to do. Now, I've already showed you a lot in Warp, but one of the most helpful things is actually the command palette. And let me hit Command K to clear everything out. And you can see that by default, this shows here. I've got search history. I've got AI search. Those are the things I've already showed you. Workflows, I've already showed you that. So those common commands are right there on the home screen if I sh choose to show them. But I can also hit Command P and get access to essentially anything. So I could come in here and say like uh, settings or something like that. And it gives me the keyboard shortcut if there is one and also allows me to select it with my keyboard. So if you're used to working with anything with a command palette like VS Code or anything else, it's really nice to not have to remember how to do everything in here. You just hit Command P and start typing.
Now, speaking of settings, let's look at those lastly under the category of what makes me interested. You can do a bunch of theming by default. In fact, I'm going to come up here and look at this appearance. I've already selected a, a custom theme here. I've added my own font, and this is pretty typical in any kind of default terminal, including like ones that come default on Mac OS. Now you can create your own custom things, and I've actually done that as well. So let me come in here, and let's say I can't remember how to get to it. If I hit Control R, I know I did it recently, so I could just start searching for themes, and there it is. So I'll CD into that, and then I'll hit Code Dot to open this in VS Code. And here you can see that they're just YAML files. So you can go ahead and define your terminal colors, any other details you want, and you can start with one of the base ones and then customize it, or you can actually download a bunch from a repo as well. So this one, Rebecca, is one I downloaded from the repo, the public repo, where they give you access to all the colors that come with this standard theme. So let me show you that as well. If I come over this way, let's look at the themes. Here's the Warp Themes repo, and I'll add a link to all these things in the description. The standard ones are the ones uh, that come default installed, but you can also look at these base 16 ones or submit your own. It's an open source project. And if you come down below, you get little previews for each of them. All it takes, uh, just like I showed you there, is you can come in here and just copy this out and add it to that uh, themes directory in VS Code or whatever text editor you prefer. Now, when it comes to actually setting a theme, let's hit Command P and do like theme, open theme picker, here it is. So I can just select one of these like fake Monokai and grab that. Come back in here, theme, like this. Uh, Rebecca, do the same thing. Fancy Dracula, there's a bunch of these in here as well. So I'll go ahead and hit the Enter key and go back to this Rebecca custom one that I grabbed. All right, back into the settings. Let's open this up. We've looked at appearance. There's also some features. You may notice that this does not have any kind of custom prompt for oh my ZSH or anything like that, but you can actually use this and honor your own settings. So I'll click this here, and now you can see the switches to uh, my custom one here, which I think is one by West Boss that I'm using now. There are also additional options like copying the output on select or how autocomplete works exactly. Here are shared blocks. There's the one we created a moment ago. And again, I will probably delete this by the time you see it. Uh, keyboard shortcuts as well. So you can search for anything. You can update any of these. So let's say you don't want command copy to be command C. I'm not sure what you're doing with your life, but if that's the case, you can change that to something else. But any of these things are available for uh, changing around. I can just come in here in the search field and look for anything I want and get access to any of those things and update them as I feel. All right, lastly, uh, this is just telling you the version I currently have. Uh, they're updating this pretty regularly. It started in June of 2020, and they've been actively developing it for some time now. All right, so that's what makes me interested. Here's what makes me skeptical. To start with, there are no real team collaboration features yet, and that's kind of the whole pitch of Warp. That's really the main reason they started is to kind of make a Google Docs of the terminal. Secondly, it's Mac only currently. Now they are planning Linux next, and then I think eventually Windows, and uh, I've listened to some interviews by their founder. That's what their kind of roadmap is going forward. Third, and this is probably the biggest one for a lot of people, it requires a login, all right? So they support, I think it's Google, GitHub, and maybe just email, and that kind of rubs developers the wrong way, and I understand. The terminal itself feels so personal to you, especially if you've customized it, if you've been working for a while in it, that to have it locked behind some kind of uh, sign up seems very sketchy and uh, it seems like an invasion of privacy. They've talked about possibly dropping that, but they feel like it's required for some of the team collaboration features they're planning. Now it is VC funded and that's another thing that makes me a little skeptical because they've raised a lot of capital and their basic plan is to charge teams for access to like custom workflows. And I see that and I can see how that might be helpful, but trying to get an entire team of developers to use just your terminal, I think might be a deal breaker for some developers. Um, we'll see, uh, it's yet to be seen if this is gonna work out, but right now that's one of the things that makes me a little skeptical. Finally, the auto completion kind of gets in my way a little bit, and while you can customize it, it's not enough uh, to my liking, so sometimes it can kind of get in my way when I'm just trying to type out what I wanna do. Now the third and final question is, should you try it? Well, let me, first of all, put a caveat out there. I'm not a pro terminal user. I do use a terminal, obviously, regularly, but I am I would say I'm a fairly light user of a terminal, so that's my one caveat. But I think there are three possibilities that would make me want to try this. Number one, if you're a beginner to the terminal, I think it's a really nice way to learn the terminal, even if you end up not sticking around with it. Secondly, if you're on a team, I would just pay attention to it because I think it actually could be useful, especially if you're on a small dev team, where you could just share what you're doing and very quickly have access to everything in kind of a central hub for your terminal.
And then thirdly, I think warp is interesting if you're a super heavy terminal user, but you're constantly using a huge variety of different and complex commands. Again, to be able to save a workflow or quickly use AI search to make sure that what you're trying to do is what you actually mean to do, I think can be a really helpful uh, advantage over just a default terminal that you might download and I think could protect you from making errors that are catastrophic. Now, if you're interested in using Warp, I actually have an invite code in the description. I think I get like a t-shirt if 10 of you sign up or something, so I do get something out of it, but it's not like I'm paid. If you get Warp, you can do the same thing and share it with people. Um, so just a note, but if you want to use that link and get me a nice Warp t-shirt, go for it. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. Again, if you need help with the terminal as a whole, I've done a very beginner series on how to use the terminal, basic features in terminals, how to customize your prompt, all of that, and I'll make sure to add links to those in the description. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was a big help. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.